All right, what is up, hustlers? Welcome in to this video. And today I am honored to be joined by the CEO of Dega, Carlos himself. And we are going to be chatting everything regarding Dega, the upcoming map builder, the ongoing ISPO, and how you can qualify and get your share of potential Dega tokens whenever the time comes around for TGE. So, guys, like the video and subscribe down below. I'm super stoked about what Dega is bringing to the market. So, we're going to dive right into it on this edition. So like I said, like the video and subscribe helps us get in front of Web3 gaming bulls just like yourself. So let's bring on Carlos. Carlos, how's it going today? Hey, Johnny. Every great. Everything's going great, man. How about yourself? Yeah, I can't complain. Um, just another day. Um, I, I think the timeline's polluted with drama today instead of uh, builders. But hey, uh, we're out here building. So nice to chat with you and thanks for taking the time. Thank you. Likewise. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to change that a little bit today with this conversation. Absolutely. So for anyone who might not know exactly what Dega is, um, obviously, I've covered it quite a bit on the Crypto Banter Show, and, and you guys have been relentless on your updates uh, regarding you know, new partners and stuff like that. But uh, in your own words, could you describe what Dega is for someone who might not know about the project? Yeah, we're, we're a pretty new project, so I'd be surprised, right, if it's... Some of the audience would actually know us. We're very new. Uh, we've been in the public sphere for about three months, I believe. So, you know, in general, Dega is a vision, right? A vision of empowering billions around the world to project their creativity in the digital economy, right? How do we get that done? Well, through a set of products and tooling that we provide uh, to creators so that they can build with all the advantages of blockchain technology without having to go through all the painful learning process um, you know, of, of the industry and the technology. So um, as a very high level, we could divide it um, in three sections, right? One, uh, we've created the ISPO, which is the thing that's premiered right now in their website. Uh, it's essentially a crowdfunding me mechanism. Uh, it was invented in Cardano. And the very first one was done by Mel Finance. Uh, they're an investor and partners and advisors for Dega. Uh, and uh, when they did it, they actually reached $1 billion TVL um, in their launch. Uh, so we're bringing this great technology to other ecosystems, right? Namely Polkadot. And then we'll follow up with um, Ethereum and Matic as well, and many other chains, right? We want to integrate this and make it available for any, for anybody. So that's like one dimension of the tooling we're building, right? Everybody needs to start cash flow and needs to start building the community. The ISPO is a great tool for that. The second thing that we're bringing to the table is that they got SDK and API. And in case somebody, you know, immediately is wondering, well, you know, what's the difference between your tooling and something like the third web or Artura. Um, they're great tools. I love what those guys are doing, uh, but they still build th something that's made for blockchain engineers. Like you need to know blockchain to use those SDKs. Um, and what we're doing is something that is abstracting that away even further. So using the Dega SDK is something as simple as, you know, uh, using um, an API for Gmail. Right, you really don't need to know what's going on under the hood to be able to build NFT collections, do nested NFTs, evolutionary NFTs, and a whole bunch of other sets of building blocks. And that's kind of like the second dimension. And then finally, uh, the third one um, is uh, right now we're about to re release and we're go into details about that uh, shortly, um, a new game that's going to be open source and it's going to be an open world for everybody to review and, and be able to create and build. So that's kind of like a, the high level description. Amazing. Yeah. And I think that simplifying the development process, not having to know what a smart contract is, anything about the blockchain, it's huge for game developers who see the potential in Web3, but might not understand where to source talent to do these things for, or to have to learn to code these things uh, on exactly. chain where you guys can kind of take that hassle away. Um, so for a product, what does it look like kind of stepping in and working with Dega? Um, like whenever they want to use your suite of tools, how does that process work? And, you know, how do they get those gaps filled? Great question. So, you know, from a product perspective, um, it essentially um, will be consolidated in what you can find in our website called Dega Studio, right? So it's a console similar to the console you would find in AWS or in Google Cloud. There you'll be able to see all the resources that you're provisioning, all the types of pre-built components that you have available for you. And that'll be kind of like the main point of interaction if you are the company, right? If you're 
provisioning the resource. From a developer standpoint, it's it's not a too much of a let's say flashy thing. You know, it's an SDK and an API, um, which is what developers like to have when they want to have flexibility to be able to adapt products to to their own needs. Um, and then from let's say a consumer basis, you'll meet us first through the game we're providing, and then eventually through the collection of our other partners' games, right? Um, and then for you as a as a user. Um, you know, Dega will be there, but you won't kind of see it because what you'll see is the game, right? And that's exactly what you want from technology. I always tell everybody the best technology is the one that's invisible, right? Like when I go to use uh, Twitter space or when we're using right now, uh, you know, recording through YouTube, we really don't want to know how the streaming algorithm works. We don't want to know how the encryption works. You know, we just want to do what we want to do, right? And for those that are gamers, they just want to play their game, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I think eventually what, what, what we'll move into in the Web3 gaming space is you don't even know there's a wallet on the back end. You don't know these things are being stored you know, on chain until you go to be like, hey, I, that asset's a value. How do I transact or how do I trade that? And then they kind mm -hmm. of learn a little bit about how that back end works. So um, I absolutely love the, the way that you framed it with like the invisible technology, so to speak, because when I hop into a game, I don't know if it's Unity. I don't know if it's Unreal Engine. I don't know what servers are backing it. All I know is I'm having a great experience. So it's all about the experience. And it's not about so much the user having to know all the technicalities on the back end. So I love that exactly. aspect. Um, and exactly talk, right. talk a little bit about the partnerships that you guys have had so far as well. Because uh, I know there's some great projects that are already, you know, kind of collaborating with you guys. Uh, so what are some of those uh, partners and what maybe... Uh, will be some of the, um, I would say, details uh, or like exchanges of value that you'll have with those partners. Yeah, so right now we have a very close partnership with uh, Cornucopias Games, you know, probably the largest. And I have to say, uh, I'm a little bit bi biased, of course, uh, because I'm working with them, but it's probably the coolest metaverse I've seen uh, in a long time. They have uh, AAA quality graphics, right? In case somebody doesn't believe me, you can go and check that out for yourself at Cornucopia's Games. Um, other than that, we're also uh, very working very closely together with Melt Finance and BiFi, uh, which are uh, DeFi projects on the Cardano uh, ecosystem. And well, Melt is also on Avalanche. And uh, with them, we're kind of like working towards uh, optimizing and, and pushing the envelope with the crowdfunding me mechanism for ISPOs. So we want to be able to make, um, you know, ISPOs multi-chain and even work with other things uh, besides the, the base token, right? Like ISPOs with stable coins and other tokens. Uh, so this is something that that's uh, in progress right now with them. Uh, we're also, I just got off the call with uh, World Mobile. With them, we'll be discussing uh, collaboration on scalability for their systems architecture, their consensus engine, and a few other uh, points of, of technological integration that we have in common, right, for protocols between Dega and what World Mobile is doing as well. We'll be doing a Twitter space with them to go into more detail on that side. And uh, last but not least, uh, we're, we've also secured uh, co-marketing from several uh, of the large layer twos on Ethereum, uh, one of the Cardano side chains. I would like to name drop all of these guys, but you know, until we do the actual announcement, I can't. But uh, it's, it's a very big collapse that we have coming up for the release of the 2D Metaverse game. Yeah, I know those uh, those collabs and partners won't disappoint whenever they whenever they drop. So excited for that. And uh, yeah, I agree. Cornucopius does look fantastic. Uh, you know, they started building at the back end of the last bull run, and, and they've been. Uh, pretty hard at it. And I think their game does look pretty awesome. So uh, some awesome partnerships. And I know Meld's also doing some really big things just in general in the finance landscape. So what would be some of the things that Dega will offer to the projects or that, you know, you'll be maybe integrating into some of these gaming projects? Yeah, for the gaming side of things, it's very clear cut is the SDK and the API, right? So, um, you know, like I was saying, instead of you needing to make a decision, you know, should I use an ERC721 or should I use another standard? Uh, how do I make my NFTs nested? How do I make my metadata dynamic? And how do I add rules for that so that it's not just something that anybody can change, but requires, you know, 
uh, actions within the game to take place, right? So all of these things, usually just describing them, anybody that's done blockchain development knows that you would need like probably considerably large team of experts at different layers to be able to build this out. So we've turned that literally into a function call, right? Like create collection, um, update metadata, and, uh, you know, si simple uh, wording that any game developer would understand without needing to learn you know, that they're using an EVM below or they're, they're using a WebAssembly or an EU DXO system. They just know that it works, right? And they say, well, deploy it on Cardano or deploy it on Ethereum or deploy it on Avalanche. It, it just works, right? So the SDK and the API for the gaming side of things. And like I mentioned with, for example, with World Mobile and some other projects, uh, we're discussing even potential collaborations on the protocol side of things, right? So literally, you know, the consensus algorithms and other types of, of systems there. Awesome. And just so people can kind of get a grip on how this is all possible, uh, how big is the team and how long have you guys been building? So the team overall is 12 people. Uh, around six of us are uh, engineers and uh, I myself am, am a technical founder. Uh, we've been building together for over six years now. We created our first layer one around 2017. Um, and since then, we've done EVN sidechains, cross-chain Texas. And I'm talking about even before DAI was out, right? Like I remember building when there was actually no, you know, stable coins on other than USDT, right? But it was built on Bitcoin back then. So yeah, we've been a while, we've been in the industry for, for a while now. Uh, I myself also led uh, the Cardano sidechains program at IOHK for about 13 months. Uh, I had the pleasure of working with very intelligent and there. Uh, but uh, yeah, so we've, we've been together for some time now. And um, the, the thing that we do that I think that makes us, let's say, somewhat more efficient that some of our colleagues is that we've taken all the great practices of building on the cloud and we brought them to blockchain, right? Like everything from, to give you an example, infrastructure as code. So when we need a new blockchain environment, it takes us literally five minutes to get an entire blockchain ecosystem up and running. So um, that way we can work faster and better. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, I know you guys have great experience in the blockchain space uh, and working with reputable companies. And um, yeah, I, I love what you guys have put together so far. Uh, did, did you mention when y'all started building Dega specifically? Uh, Dega as a concept uh, about a year. We've been working on okay. it conceptually. Formal operations, it was November 2022, right? Uh, so we don't shy away from the bear market because it was it was... It was a tough month and uh, we've been, you know, in the public space for about three months now that we actually, you know, started getting out, getting the brand out there. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, and I think it, it obviously takes, uh, takes courage to build in these types of times, right? A lot of people run away from the space, but I actually think that the people that are building the hardest in the bear, I mean, they're going to a reap the fruits of, of a bull, obviously way more, but the thing about getting your product in place in the, bear market is you're not scrambling around prices are pumping people's attention spans are so short because they just want green candles but as a as someone who's just building the product you're not so much worried about that if your product's completely there and then you can just focus on shipping product and, and the market takes care of itself uh, while if you don't have your product in place people are more worried about how can we pump the token everyone's looking around it, it just it's so hectic in, in a bull so uh, I think, first of all, it takes courage to build in these times. And then uh, I do think the projects that double down in these time periods are really going to reap the rewards on the way up. So I love to hear that. And uh, talk, talk a little bit about the ISPO as well. So I know people in the Cardano ecosystem definitely know like what an ISPO is and have seen a few over time. But as far as going multi-chain, I think it is a new concept. Obviously, when you talk about Polkadot, Ethereum, Polygon, so... What exactly is an ISPO? And then how could someone get involved with the Dega ISPO? Yeah, happy to do so. So it, it's so funny, right? That, you know, we, we in crypto, we have so many things in common, but we are so siloed, right? And kind of a little bit tribal about that, right? Uh, ISPO is a great invention created in Cardano. If I'm not mistaken, actually Meld, our partner, was the one that did the very first one. And um, basically, instead of you going and buying tokens or buying an NFT or paying a subscription for a service, what you would do is you stake your assets, be them in Cardano, it's Ada, in Polkadot, it's Dot. And 
you stake it to a project's validator. And the thing is, usually, you know, as, as any proof of stake system, uh, the validator keeps some of the rewards generated, right? Because the bigger the stake you have, the more blocks you mint, the more rewards you get, right? Uh, you would usually keep like 5% of those rewards, right? And then distribute the rest um, proportionally to your delegators. Uh, but in an ISPO, we take the concept of setting the fee to 100, right? So now the validator host keeps all the rewards generated from the blockchain validation, right? So you would say, well, why would I delegate to somebody who's keeping 100% of the rewards? Well, because in exchange for that, they're going to give you their token, right? And they can do NFT airdrops and they can open up products and services to your account, right? So essentially it turns delegation into a form of crowdfunding and subscription, models, right? So this is a true native blockchain subscription system, right? And the advantage for that is that, you know, you might see a project usually that you like, that you want to support, but let's say it's being done by somebody, you know, in Nicaragua or in Bangladesh or, you, you, you know, from a place that you're not familiar with. And, you know, you might want to support the project, but you're scared to send them, you know, $10,000, $100,000. So instead, you would delegate now through an ISPO because it can be set up by anybody around the world. That person would start to generate yield. And over the course of several months, you can follow the progress of the project, right? So if you like what they're doing, you like what they're saying, you give them a, a space to build and it gives you time to analyze the project, you can keep supporting them or you can say, well, you know, I don't like where they're going. I'm going to withdraw my stake. And now, you know, you, you didn't lose any of your original stake, right? I think it's a really innovative way of fundraising and it protects the retail's downside quite a bit. Obviously, if price yeah. volatility comes in, you know, Ethereum, Polygon, or, or something goes up or down, there's volatility there, right? But at the same time, yeah. like you said, you're not losing your tokens or losing dollars. It's just based on the value of that asset. So Correct. I do love the downside and it, it just makes it healthier on the FOMO side. Obviously, mm -hmm. uh, if someone's on this video and doesn't know what that means, fear of missing out. And it, it, you know, mm -hmm. if you see something pump on launch day, you're like, dang it, I didn't get in. This gives people yep. a, a longer time window, like a runway to be able to stake tokens and then get those tokens in a very, I would call it, maybe the most fair launch way to go about it. Exactly, exactly. Because, you know, we sometimes get fomo into things. Like somebody tells us, look, look, this project is closing down today, right? So you need to get in right now. It doesn't give you time to analyze. But because you're FOMO-based, right? Maybe not so much in the bear market, but uh, although it does happen, but much more in the bull market where everybody you're seeing, everybody do 10x, 20x, 40x, 100x. So you have kind of like an incentive to just jump into something like, or like how we call it in, in the industry, right? Like you ape into it, right? Yeah. Uh, with a proper analysis. And then now you're, you know, you're in for 10K, 30K, 40K that you came into it, right? This way, it's more sustainable. It allows you to get to know the project, right? And also the project gets a chance to showcase what they can do. Because honestly, you know, let's say some of us are not that specialized in hyping and, and FOMOing people in, right? That's not what we do. We're builders. So let us build, right? Let us show you what we can do. And that's what an ISPO incentivizes. So it's a more sustainable long-term mechani mechanism. And um, we're not going to be limited anymore, you know, just by having it right now on Cardano or Polkadot. We've already done the code so that this can be supported on Ethereum. Um, and, you know, considering just purely discussing, uh, you know, uh, market size, Ethereum is much bigger, right? It's like uh, its market cap is way bigger. So it has the potential to support many more creators around the world, right? We can easily see, imagine a fund of, you know, a billion, two billion of uh, assets of Ethereum being staked and generating yield for funding creators. Yeah, and think about um, if people who don't know, how much TVL is in the Cardano um, pool at the moment? Well, we started off when we launched, uh, we crossed like 9 million TVL, like on the first two weeks. Uh, this was with like minimal, let's say, outreach. It was very organic. Uh, purely on social media conversations. Now it's down to like 6 million and something Still just impressive. because, you know, the, 
Yeah, yeah, it, and and it's not that people have win, have withdrawn uh, their Cardano, right? Their ADA. They're, it's still, it's actually grown, but as you know, the price went down. I think it, when we launched, it was like twenty seven cents. Now it's like twenty four. Or something like that but yeah this is basically where we are right now um so this kind of showcases how appealing the product is right and this is dega is a brand that just again it's been in the public eye for like three months uh people have uh got gotten to know us trust us had to have seen our progress and the partnerships that we closed right so imagine you know putting this in the hands of the entire blockchain industry you know what can other projects do with this right they can grow a lot and they can build a lot at the same time. Yeah. And think mm -hmm. about, like you said, the liquidity is so siloed in the space. There is a lot of liquidity over on the Cardano chain, but you know, like the Polkadot chain and Cardano, they don't, they pale in comparison to the liquidity that is on like ETH mainnet. So it's like, you know, the doors could open up uh, tons of opportunities for both the, the people who only participate over on ETH and might not, you know, delve into these different chains. Cause it is very yeah. tribal. The Solana tribe isn't over here, degening Ethereum NFTs. The, you know, tribe that's on Ethereum isn't, you know, delving into all these different things. So I think that uh, it, it makes a lot of sense to go multi-chain and I'm excited to see uh, whenever it does. How can someone get involved? Like I, I know on Dago.org, I believe if you just click on the uh, learn more or on the ISPO tab, you can get linked in there. But how would you get involved in this? Yeah, so there's there's well, it, it, if you want to stake for for being a part of the Dega ISPO itself, um, right now, you can do that with uh, Ada or with Polkadot. And yeah, you can just go into our website in the ISPO section. We have uh, detailed instructions on how to go about that. It says how to participate. You can see Cardano, Polkadot are already active. Ethereum, Polygon coming soon. And we'll keep adding more networks, right? Uh, so that's if you want to be a part of that. Now, if you are listening to this and you want to do an ISPO because you believe that this concept is proper for your project, hit us up on our Discord or our Telegram, and we're happy to discuss all of these conversations, right? We'd love to partner up with other communities to do the Ethereum and the Polygon ISPO. So that's an open invite. That's fantastic. Um, I'm sure that there will be some builders that come through the door to try to get their hands on this type of a, of a launch. Like I said, I, f I do believe it's a very innovative and, and fair launch uh, platform. Now let's talk a little bit about, I believe this was announced today on uh, Twitter yeah. that this is, I think I saw, was it October 3rd that you guys are going to launch the map builder. So Dega Realms, a 2D open world game built by you, supported by the Dega team and our tools. Talk a little bit about Dega Realms, what people can expect, and um, yeah, just kind of give us a high level overview of, of what exactly this will entail. Yeah, happy to do so. So essentially, it's kind of like for us and for those that are in Web3, it's kind of like a decentralized but 2D, right? Um, and, you know, for those that, that are not familiar with Web3, if I had to point to something, it's kind of like Roblox, but 2D, right, instead of 3D. So why do it 2D, right? Well, there's, there's two main reasons, right? One of them is because it allows anybody to participate right? You know, it's something, building these 2D maps is something that you can do if you can create uh, PNG files, PNG images, right? And there's literally tens of millions of assets for sale or for free that you can find on the internet. You could generate new ones with uh, mid-journey, right? So it's super simple. Somebody in fourth or fifth grade could start building 2D worlds on top of the Dega system because of what we chose, right? Uh, the other reason is also, as it is simple to build, it is also simple to run, right? So anybody with like a $50 smartphone can start joining the Dega realms, right? And execute that, um, that open world. So that means that we're opening the door for the creators and the users to be literally anybody on the planet with a very basic smartphone and a very basic internet connection, right? And uh, what we're providing always, Dega is a platform company, right? So we're providing the tools, but all the maps that you'll see built there in the game will be created by the audience, by the community, right? The Dega community or anybody that just wants to jump in there and build their worlds. Um, and right now we're releasing the map builder. That's the first step. Two weeks after that, we'll be releasing the character builder so you can create your avatars. And uh, we'll also release uh, about 
two weeks after that, that's like well into November, we'll be releasing the item crafter and some game dynamics. So we want to reproduce all the pop popular genres in this format. So, and for anybody that needs to visualize it, it's it'll be like the classic Pokemon, like the original Pokemon Red or like the original Zelda, which was a 2D top-down game. This is a sample that we did for the TTOO community, right? We wanna make sure to give you guys the mafia verse with inside the Dega realms. And, um, you know, we want to recreate within this world um, MOBA gameplay, right? MOBA is like the Dota 2 gameplay. Uh, we want to recreate uh, Battle Royale gameplay and obviously some RPG gameplay as well. So essentially open up and bring all these popular genres in a way that anybody can make one of those games using these tools. And they're no code tools. You don't need to be a programmer to build with this. Absolutely love this. Obviously we're looking at like TTOO, my, my collections, like iteration of the world, but this just gives those collections that aren't game builders, that aren't, you know, uh, developers, a chance to kind of have an open world experience, get their community in there and interact with each other. And so this will be multiplayer, right? So like if people are walking around yep. on the server, they'll be able to interact with each other. Uh, I think that's going to be awesome. As we see here, the, the Capo's Villa, I think that's what we called it last week. Yeah. Uh, so this, this is honestly like so sick. I'm really excited for the community to hop into this. And then um, I know there's probably going to be some experiences built for your other partners as well. Um, so I think this is going to be super cool to kind of just get involved with and, and be able to hop in there, especially for these communities who don't have that right now. Um, this is definitely like immersive and interactive. And I, I really appreciate that. Yeah. And we're, we'll be adding a whole, the, let's say what everybody calls the dream, right? In terms of metaverses in the sense that we'll add features that you can token gate. So for example, if you want to say this is the capo villa, so only capos can go in, we'll add the feature. So you can add the conditions for you, for people to join your, your map. Uh, we'll add conditions for if you want to build them, right? If you want to say, hey, if you want to hang out with, you know, the VIP crew, it costs X amount of Y token, right? Uh, to access it, or you can make it open for everybody. However it is that you want to do it, we'll allow you to do it. And once the character builder and the item builder as well is ready as well, you'll be able to sell items there in your marketplaces, right? So if people want to buy your items, they're going to jump into your map. They're going to be be able to see the marketplaces there and be able to purchase those items. So it's the full, you know, dream that we've had for an open economy within the metaverse. It's just that, you know, we're narrowing it down to a 2D top-down game for simplicity and for access, for global access. Love it. Um, I'm super stoked to hop into this. So October 3rd, is that what I saw? Yeah, for the map builder, and we actually have an open competition there in case somebody wants to do their own maps, we will help you. We will do hands-on tutorials for this, and we're giving away a massive prize of Dega tokens to the map builder contest winner. So like 300,000 Dega will be given out to the winner, and we will teach you hands-on how to get it done. This is an open invite as well to any gaming or non-gaming NFT collection out there that wants to have your own world within the metaverse i love it and so tge i believe is q1 2024 that's what i've seen at least floated around on social yes. media um correct other than the ispo is there any other way if there are airdrops going on uh anything like that around the dega token yeah yeah actually i just got off you know the conversation with several of our partners and we're going to be doing airdrops uh there's actually two types of airdrops coming uh, one, which will be through our partners. So, for example, if you hold the uh, Mel Diamond Hand NFT, if you hold Cornucopia's Land, uh, if you hold the uh, BiFi uh, Purple NFT, and a few others, which we'll give away all of these details in blog posts and in our Discord and Telegram. So, if you hold any of those NFTs, we'll do an airdrop for you. We're also doing uh, airdrop for some of the uh, communities that we're inviting to be a part of Dega, namely TTOO. So if you're one of the NFT holders there, you're going to get your Dega airdrop, very easy to claim. And if you're also part of the Neo Tokyo community, this is an open invite to them, we'll be doing an airdrop to all of your citizen holders, the outer citizen NFT holders, actually. So, um, you know, we'll publish all the details uh, later on, but join us in our Discord, join us in our Telegram, and we'll be happy to, you know, onboard you and have you part of the Deca tribe. 
Fantastic. Everyone loves a little airdrop action. So obviously I'm on the Twitter here, but where can people find more on Dega, jump into the community, uh, and then, you know, shill your Twitter handle, for, for lack of a better word, uh, shill them your <laughs> Twitter handle so they can follow you as well. Yeah, happy to do so. So I'd say that the biggest action um, goes on in Discord, right? Just because it's, you know, the place for gamers. Now, I know it's not for everybody. So if you're a Telegram person, you know, you can jump into the Dega Telegram. You'll find that in our website. Uh, in terms of the news, obviously, Dega Twitter, and you can just hit the, you know, subscribe button uh, or the notifications button, sorry, so that you can get all the updates there. And um, for myself, uh, you can find me by searching Carlos René Dega, or my handle is C-C-E-R-R-A-T-O-147, uh, Cesarato 147. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll, obviously, I'm also mentioned constantly in the Dega in Twitter, so you can just see me there, and you can hit me up there. Uh, and yeah, that's where basically all the action goes. Amazing. And I'll throw your link, your personal link down below, uh, as well as the Dega link. So people can jump into the community, find you very easily, uh, and know they're not falling on some random page on X. Elon's doing a terrible job over there fighting, the, <laughs> fighting the impersonations and, and stuff. It, it's crazy. I feel yeah. like, I feel like the mentions are even worse than they used to be with that type of stuff. So I will link all the official links down below for anyone, um, who wants to check out Dega and wants to check out Carlos's page. Uh, Carlos, anything I didn't touch on or anything you want to say before we uh, wrap it up? Yeah, just, uh, well, final two things. It would be, uh, we're also uh, currently, you can do a purchase of the Dega Premium Pass for the NFT avatars that we'll be having. Those are going to be the OG Dega avatars. And they will also have an airdrop, a Dega airdrop included with your purchase. Right now you can buy, like right now you could buy the Cardano and the Dot one, right? We're going to be releasing the Ethereum and the Matic one uh, like a week after we do the Map Builder release. And uh, so stay tuned for that. Those will also have a considerable amount of Dega airdrops. And uh, finally, for anybody out there that's uh, on the investment side of things, we do have a private round going on. Uh, obviously, those details cannot be discussed publicly because it's a private round, but uh, feel free to reach out to us and we're happy to uh, address that for anybody that's either an angel investor or works at a venture capital fund. Amazing. Um, I think those are great opportunities all around. Uh, and I believe the pre-mint avatar I wasn't there's some sort of boost it also could give you to your ISPO or what were those details? Oh, and thank you for mentioning that. Yeah, I totally forgot. So basically, if you're part of the ISPO and you have the premium pass for the OG avatars, they give you a boost of um, in your in your ISPO delegation. And um, that's on top of other bonuses that we're going to be giving uh, for the premium pass. And also for that's separate from the airdrop we'll be giving to the direct pass purchasers, right? So, yeah, so basically you're getting airdrop, you're getting ISPO bonus, and you're going to get gameplay with that premium pass. And every, all of these are in the coming, let's say, two to one to two months. All the Fantastic. Benefits. I love it. Yeah, I knew I was forgetting something. I was like, all right, that, that's, that's the one detail that we can highlight there. So lots of ways to get involved yeah. with the stake pool, with the airdrops, with the NFT. Uh, make sure you guys hit the like button and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts on Dega and everything we discussed today in the comments section below. And I will once again leave the links for Dega and for Carlos's Twitter down in the description. We will